am I the asshole for falsely accusing a veteran of stolen valor, when she couldn't give any details about her service? I, 34M, served as a captain in the Marine Corps. I have left the service, and right now I'm doing an MBA. One of my classmates, 31F, who we'll call Jay, is very gentle, very soft-spoken and unassuming. Jay and I were working together on a case study once, and I started opening up to her about my military service and all the lessons that I've learned from the Corps. Jay enthusiastically told me that's so cool. I was a surface warfare officer in the Navy. I immediately felt suspicious about this claim. As I said, Jay is very demure, and she doesn't really have the bravado that is required in the military environment, at least, I feel like a certain amount of bravado is required. I still humored her, and began asking about the details of her military experience, where she deployed, what courses she went through, what ship she served on, etc. etc. Suddenly Jay got all tight-lipped, and she couldn't say anything specific about military life. She kept making excuses along the lines of it just wasn't a good period of my life and I'd rather not talk about it. Eventually I felt like I had done enough snooping around, and I bluntly told her that she was bullshitting, and that I'd rather not work with a phony. I talked about this experience with my friend, M, at our school's veterans organization. I told M to be wary of anything Jay says. M responded by telling me that Jay did serve, he's seen her paperwork and ID and everything, and that in fact, one of her MBA recommendation letters was written by a retired Rear Admiral, 08, who held Jay in high regard. Whoops. The next time I met Jay, before our class started, I tried to act chummy towards her and make up for accusing her of being a liar. She laughed in my face and told me to pound sand, pooly. And for those of you who don't know, yes, she was being derisive here. Am I the asshole? Am I the asshole for telling my parents that my wife and I do not want them renaming our children and won't encourage the use of the nicknames they gave them? My wife and I welcomed twins in November. We struggled to have children for a long time, nine years, and had our twins via IVF. It was a long battle to have our babies and when we chose their names it was something we not only took seriously, but poured a lot of love into because we knew they would be the only children we would name. We chose the first names Ezra and Esme for the twins. Their middle names are more uncommon so we won't share. But what I will say is part of what went into the choice for these names was the length. Growing up I had a long last name, 10 letters, and my parents gave me very formal and lengthy first and middle names, Frederick, Lawrence, and I always found my name very stuffy and old-fashioned. I go by a name derived from my middle name now. I also took my wife's much simpler last name when we married. So we announced the name of our twins when they were a day old and when we announced the names we were aware my parents might not be in love with them, but I stupidly believed the twins being born would be enough of a deterrent for a negative comment. About a week after they were born my parents asked what kind of names they had and how could we give them such juvenile and incomplete names. I told them they were neither of those things and they needed to be careful about how they spoke about their grandchildren's names. I thought they had listened but then in January they started calling them Winifred and Douglas. At first we weren't positive they were talking about the twins but then we were celebrating my niece's 10th birthday and my parents directly addressed my daughter as Winifred and I knew it was them they were talking to. I told them those were not their names. They said, am I the asshole for telling my parents that my wife and I do not want them renaming our children and won't encourage the use of the nicknames they gave them? I thought they had listened but then in January they started calling them Winifred and Douglas. At first we weren't positive they were talking about the twins but then we were celebrating my niece's 10th birthday and my parents directly addressed my daughter as Winifred and I knew it was them they were talking to. I told them those were not their names. They said those were nicknames they had given them and everyone has a nickname, that it's not like we gave them names that could lend themselves to nicknames. I said Ezzy and Essie if they really wanted nicknames. They ignored me and they continued to use the nicknames. So we decided not to be around because on top of that they were telling my siblings that the names they had chosen were better for my children. My siblings thought they were crazy. My parents tried to see the kids a few times since and I always told them no. They asked why and I told them they do not get to see our children if all they can do is insult their names. My parents accused me of trying to control them and said nicknames are a part of life. I told them what they had done wasn't giving a nickname, it was renaming my children in their own heads and my wife and I do not want them renaming them. I also said we will not further encourage the use of the nicknames they gave them. My parents said if I had stuck to the family way of naming babies none of this would be happening and they said I was being unfair to them. Am I the A? I took revenge on a cheating ex and I went overboard. So recently I found out that my ex had a flirtatious relationship at work with one of her managers at a restaurant she works at. This involved sexual dirty talking while on the shift, sexual compliments and photo sharing and plans to hang out. I found out and told her not to text the other guy again and block him. 
Well something told me to check her phone again and it didn't take less a full day for her to respond back to his texts on a message thus continuing the contact of cheating on me. What's worst is how she described getting caught by me to be hilarious, funny, and that she'll reach out to this guy when we're done. She made me sound like a doormat, a joke, an option. As if everything we had was a plaything for her to play with. Feeling emasculated, embarrassed and surprised she could ever talk about me like this to another man, I posted her incriminating screenshots to her social media feeds, Instagram and Snapchat stories since I had access to the accounts, and sent those screenshots to the guy she was cheating on me with and her boss at work since she was doing it with another manager at the restaurant. I also sent them to her mother as she was texting this guy the whole week I was helping her mother move to her new home. The guy responded immediately and her boss and mother has yet to respond. She later called me back to apologize about the ordeal but the damage was already done and I broke the news to her about what I did and to screw her. I think I went overboard as this is something I never done. Take revenge on someone by screwing them over. Am I the asshole for giving my mom the wrong start time for my birthday lunch so she'd be on time? My, 22F, mom, mid 40F, is one of those people who is always late to everything. I'm talking family get-togethers, birthdays, graduations, weddings, you name it she's showing up late. At first growing up I just thought it was because she's bad with time, but as I've gotten older I genuinely believe she likes making an entrance. I personally find it 1, rude and 2, embarrassing because it's not like it happens once in a while, it literally happens at every single function she is invited to that has a set time. Many family members have complained about this, nothing ever changes. It's gotten to the point that whenever my grandma has family lunches or dinners she'll tell me mom it starts an hour earlier than it actually does, so she'll be there on time. My mom doesn't know that my grandma does this, it's a joke between grandma and I. This past weekend was my 22nd birthday. My grandma wanted to do a lunch for me at her place with our immediate family. The lunch was to start at 2 p.m., but we told my mom 1 p.m. I had plans later that evening to go out for dinner with my boyfriend. So I wanted to leave my grandma's house at around 5 the absolute latest because I needed to go home and get all ready. Well of course my mom was late. We called her at like 2.30 p.m. to see where she was because you know, it's her daughter's birthday. She had just left her house at 2.30 p.m. and still had to pick up her boyfriend on her way to my grandma's, 30 to 35 minutes away, so none of us were expecting her to arrive until like 3.30 p.m. She finally arrives two and a half hours late from the time we told her, makes her little entrance. We question her about. She tells us she, am I the asshole for giving my mom the wrong start time for my birthday lunch so she'd be on time? She finally arrives two and a half hours late from the time we told her, makes her little entrance. We question her about. She tells us she thought the lunch started at 2? We asked her where she heard this from, she said my aunt, who was present at the lunch, told her. We questioned my aunt and she said she felt bad lying to my mom. Everyone is pretty annoyed, but we all move on. Fast forward an hour later, 4.30 p.m., I have to start leaving. My mom starts getting all annoyed with me that I'm leaving so soon and that she barely got to see me for my birthday. I told her that my life doesn't revolve around her, and that she should have been there sooner. She started giving me attitude and listing all these excuses as to why she's late. I couldn't be bothered to hear them and left. Later that night she messaged me saying that I was acting like an asshole towards her and it was rude of me to lie to her about the time the lunch started. My mom and my aunt think I'm an asshole for lying to her. My grandma doesn't think it's a big deal and they're overacting. I came here for some outside opinions. Am I the asshole for telling my in-laws I will not be changing the name of my bakery just because they work there? The bakery was originally my parents' bakery, my mom's more specifically. Dad worked there but mom ran the whole thing and she was the driving force behind it. The bakery was named something with sun in it. When my parents had me four years later they named me Sunny. My mom had a very complicated pregnancy and delivery and I was going to be their only child. So they named me after the bakery. I always loved the connection and it was especially meaningful because my mom died when I was seven. Dad kept it running with help, so I could take it over one day if I wanted to, so mom's legacy never died. He got sick when I was 16. It was tough. He fought as long as he could but he died when I was 18 and I took over the bakery. I baked from a really young age and dreamed of running it one day. So I took over as the head baker and have kept it open myself for a decade now. In that time I met and married my wife Lila, she started working there and her mom and sister also joined the small team we have. It was going well until a few months ago. We were at Lila's parents' house, her whole family was there, and they brought up how the name for the bakery feels wrong when the family has changed so much. Lila told them the bakery is still mine and given the history and who named it, they shouldn't think they would get a say in any of it. It was dropped for a while. Then they brought it up again. 
Lila again reminded them that it was none of their business. Lila is expecting our first child now and she hasn't been working as much, or at all these last couple of months, and I have noticed some comments here and there from mother-in-law especially about, am I the asshole for telling my in-laws I will not be changing the name of my bakery just because they work there? Lila is expecting our first child now and she hasn't been working as much, or at all these last couple of months, and I have noticed some comments here and there from mother-in-law especially about darling bakery names or how nice businesses names are when they tell you it's a family-run thing. I would internally roll my eyes but smile and say those were great names for those people's businesses. Clearly she got annoyed because then her and my sister-in-law cornered me recently and told me that they felt like they had such a big part in it, which they don't, that the name should reflect the family and not just me or what my mom had wanted to call it. I told them I will not be changing the name just because they work there and if that is a problem there is no reason for them to force themselves to stay if they don't want to. Both told me they do want to work there and told me I was twisting what they said, that they just want to feel more included and like this is their family business too. Mother-in-law told me that unless we plan on naming our child some son-related name, it's just going to be a random name in the future. I pointed out many businesses are that. But they told me I was being deliberately obtuse. Am I the asshole? My sister didn't get into a single one of her dream schools and I'm living for it. I don't like my youngest sister, why yes. I will admit that. She's always been a daddy's girl and never faced a single consequence in her life. While my parents are not narcissists or abusive, they've always been softer on YS than any of my other siblings. She's always been given privileges that were never given to any of the other siblings. It does not help that she's a selfish brat who has made it her mission to make all of her siblings' lives as hard as possible growing up. At some point, YS realized she can just lie and get away with it, or really do anything and not face any consequences. This ranged from petty lying to get all of us in trouble, to actual crime. She used to steal any cash she could find from all of us. My parents defended her and brushed it off even after my oldest sister caught her on camera doing it. YS graduates from high school this year. My parents have been awfully quiet about her academics for the last two years. Despite all of their other children having high marks academically, all now having college degrees, they could never stop gushing about YS and how smart she was. Until two years ago when she nearly failed high school by ditching for an entire semester. Her GPA now is abysmal. She's barely graduating from what I've heard. Yet, my parents and YS still thought she could get into a good school. YS's dream school was Yale. With Harvard a second pick. I am not joking. Despite her graduation quickly approaching, I had heard nothing about YS's college plans. And it turns out that my sister didn't get into a single one of her dream schools and I'm living for it. Despite her graduation quickly approaching, I had heard nothing about YS's college plans. And it turns out that my parents and she had kept it secret because she got accepted into zero of the schools she wanted. They applied to 12, and she only got accepted into one. The school she got accepted to accepts literally anyone with a pulse that can pay. What makes this more cathartic to me, and makes me much pettier, is when I and my older brother went to college my father refused to use the money he saved for our college on us. Claiming because we got scholarships we didn't need and he would save it for YS. I know for a fact YS is distraught right now. The point is moot anyway because she would fail slash drop out of school anyway. But for the first time in her life, she's actually facing consequences and I'm living for it right now. Am I the asshole for calling my girlfriend selfish for being upset I wasn't at the birth of our kid because I was also in hospital? My girlfriend and I, both 26F, have a son who is just over a year old. And there was some major drama during the birth. For some context, I have chronic heart problems and have been struggling with it since birth. I had a surgery when I was an infant another at 7 and another at 15. I haven't needed one since and have been doing well all around. When my girlfriend was 6 months pregnant, I got really, really ill and it took a massive toll on my lungs and heart. I pulled through but spent about a month in the hospital. I felt so awful that I couldn't be with my girlfriend, Jane, but she was super great with it. Then, two days before the due date, I was rushed into the hospital due to a buildup of fluid around my heart. I had to get the fluid removed as soon as possible. When the fluid was all out, my brother-in-law came to visit me and he told me Jane had given birth. I was both ecstatic and devastated. I had to spend the night under supervision but as soon as I was allowed to leave, I went to the maternity wing to see my girlfriend and baby. At the time, all negative emotions were smothered by our bundle of joy but over the months, Jane has been showing more and more signs of resentment towards me. It came to a head last night during our date night. I had the whole day planned, baby had gone to grandma's, her favorite takeout, got all her favorite movies ready to play spa evening planned, etc. But she wasn't feeling any of it. I asked her what was wrong and she said she's angry at me for missing the birth. I'll admit, I didn't handle it as best as I wanted to, 
but we argued for a bit and I ended up calling her selfish for saying that. I asked her if she understood the severity of the situation and that I was very ill. She got up and said she wasn't going to let me patronize her and that she's never been disrespected like that before and that she's going to bed. Am I the asshole? Am I the asshole for continuing to sleep nude despite my neighbors being able to see into my bedroom? So, I'm a 28-year-old dude and have been living in my house for a few years now. One of the main reasons I chose this place was because my bedroom faced east, allowing me to wake up to the morning sunlight. Most mornings I wake up before my alarm goes off just because the sunlight coming through the window waking me up. There used to be a tree line that provided a natural barrier between my house and any potential neighbors, so I never saw the need for curtains or blinds along with they are expensive as hell for the nice ones. Recently my neighborhood expanded and most of the tree line my bedroom was facing was cut down to build new houses. So boom, then there's a house was built right across from mine, and their window has a clear view into my bedroom. I've always been comfortable sleeping nude, and it wasn't an issue when there were no neighbors around. But not long after the people moved and the father from the house came over to my house and pretty much told me to stop being nude in front of my window since his family can see inside my bedroom. He wasn't nice about it. But, he wasn't mean either just matter of factly like he gave me an order or fully expected it to be done like I was his kid or his employee. I was somewhat surprised but understood his concern, so I made an effort to be more mindful of my nudity when in view of the window. I stopped cleaning and making my bed before getting dressed. I'd hop out of bed walk into my closet and at least put on shorts then go about my morning chores. That being said, I still sleep nude, and I occasionally end up being visible to the neighbors for a brief moment after waking up. The father came over again, leading to an argument between us. I told him I was trying my best to be considerate, but there's only so much I can do and that it's my house and I'm not changing my lifestyle because they moved in. He threatened to call the police and said I was being a menace to the neighborhood whatever the hell that means. So, Am I the asshole for continuing to sleep nude even though my neighbors can see into my bedroom? Am I the asshole for telling my sister that a comment she made is exactly why her marriage crashed and burned? My sister has been staying with my husband and I, men in our late 20s, for the last week and some change. She and her husband have initiated the divorce process and she said she doesn't want to stay alone right now, which I completely understand. It would be very hard to go from living with a partner to a completely silent house. I opened our home to her before I found out why her marriage didn't work out. Now that the two of us have had multiple conversations about it, I'm a little uncomfortable. There was no infidelity. There was no big scandal. What she told me is that her husband wasn't making love with her enough. The things she has been saying have floored me. She says without love making, the two of them were basically just like roommates. She said she had been pushing for him to get a hormone imbalance test done because while they were still making love, it wasn't enough. She said he had begun resisting even normal touches from her because from his perspective, all she thought about was love making which apparently isn't true. I'm not sure I believe that. I can elaborate in the comments but overall it just left me feeling sad for her ex and the disrespect of saying sex is the only thing that separates a partner from a roommate. Not even a friend. I've done my best to be supportive, but I can't relate to the thought process at all. If my partner told me tomorrow that he wasn't up for sex for the next few weeks, months, or longer, I would just take care of myself and respect that. I love him and I want him to be the person I do life with forever. This all came to a head last night. I left my husband the day after our youngest moved out. He says I've deceived him all these years. I left my husband the day after our youngest moved out. He says I've deceived him all these years. My F49, husband, M51, cheated on me. It was 10 years ago when I got a call from school saying that our youngest, then 9 was sick and needed to go home. When we arrived I heard them in our bedroom. I panicked made loud noises to let them know they weren't alone and that our daughter was with me. I'm crying just writing this, I still cry whenever I remember that day. The first year after that was the hardest on me. I felt so insignificant and inadequate. Ugly and undesirable. We started therapy and my husband promised to do anything to make it work again. We moved apartments and bought new furniture and I started a new habit of changing the sheets every night before bed. All of this wasn't as effective as that one morning when I woke up and realized that I wasn't in love with my husband anymore. After this realization everything seemed easier moving forward. I saw him as a roommate and a great support raising the children. A good friend. We love our children and we wanted the best for them. For these next 10 years we hardly ever fought and we raised three beautiful happy and successful young people. When I realized that I didn't love him anymore I also stopped caring what if he did it again. It was one of my nightmares in the beginning. I didn't care anymore as long as I slept in clean sheets every night. Around Christmas, our youngest daughter who is now 19 got her first contract for her own apartment. 
That's when I knew. Am I the asshole for telling my parents to pick between me and my sister for the holidays? I hardly spoke to my family in 2021. My parents would send me texts like when you are ready to apologize we'll be here type shit. I responded with a Bible verse about adultery and how they support it. I was berated again and we hardly spoke until October of 2021. Last year I was told we were doing Thanksgiving at Tori's place and if I wanted to come I needed to apologize to Tori and her husband. I laughed and ended up going to Brendan's family's. Where Brendan's mom posted me with her family on Facebook and tagged me with a quote about family being those you choose. I never told her to post it. But my mom saw it and went apeshit. Asking for me to come over and talk and even commented on the post. So this year my plan is to go to Brendan's family again. My mom called and said she wanted to host this year. I asked if Tori and her husband would be there. She said of course they are family. I said so was Brendan, but I saw how you treated him and me. So no, thank you. Yesterday my dad called and said my mom is distraught and has been for years. She wants us all to get along, so I need to do the right thing. I said I'll come if my sister isn't invited. He said that he wouldn't do that to family. I said he did that to me for two years. He claimed I did it to myself. My mom is now saying it was my dad that has been the hard ass about this the whole time. I said she should have divorced him then because I'm not putting up with his shit anymore. Either my sister isn't invited or I don't come. I've now had some extended family reach out and say my parents are upset and hurt. I said my parents were totally okay with not having me around for two years. Am I the asshole? My son spent $2,000 on my debit card to go party with his friends in a different state. I'm beyond furious. When you become a parent there is all sorts of moments where you wonder where it all went wrong but this really takes the cake. He's 17, and me and his father are divorced but have a great relationship. He's never seen us fighting or anything like that because he was young when it happened. I've been 100% honest with him about it, and it never seemed to negatively affect him. Right when he turned 14 though, he started making my life a living hell. Sneaking out to go hang with girls, not doing his homework, stuff like that. I've always been very relaxed when it came to the discipline stuff because my father abused me as a kid. I'd take his phone rather than keep him from his friends or making it to where he had to come straight home after school but the behavior only got worse. Up until a few months ago, I thought I raised a son from hell. He started getting better though, and we actually communicated like I wanted. He blamed it on stress, missing his dad, he's three states away for work right now, and other stuff. Because he was starting to be so good, I let him have a card attached to my bank account so he could spend money on stuff he liked. That turned out to be a mistake however, as when I went to go check on him at 7am after getting a glass of water, he wasn't in his bed. Of course I start furiously calling and calling him but he's not answering. I see I have several texts from my bank about various amounts being spent from his card. I immediately dis- My son spent $2,000 on my debit card to go party with his friends in a different state. I let him have a card attached to my bank account so he could spend money on stuff he liked. That turned out to be a mistake however, as when I went to go check on him at 7am after getting a glass of water, he wasn't in his bed. Of course I start furiously calling and calling him but he's not answering. I see I have several texts from my bank about various amounts being spent from his card. I immediately disabled his card from my banking app. I'm gonna be honest here. I cried and cried. The amount equaled to about $2,000 and while I'm not exactly living paycheck to paycheck, it's really gonna hold me down. I called his dad, told him what happened. Then sent him a very long text of how I felt and how dare he effing do this to the person putting a roof over his head. He finally answered at 9, saying he was over state lines and couldn't come home immediately. When he did finally get home however, we had a huge altercation. I did throw stuff at him and told him to get out of my house. I have never felt so out of control. I've never screamed and cussed as much as I did in that moment. He said the reason he did it was because he finally got a legit girlfriend and wanted to impress her and the boys. Apparently some of his friends are as old as 21. I don't know where he is right now and frankly I couldn't care less. I told his father he needs to fly down here and get him. I'm tired of putting up with abuse from my son and this was the last effing straw. You sacrifice everything to give someone a good life just to get spit in the face and I'm tired of it. I've been calling my bank to get this all sorted out but I feel like I've just been stabbed in the heart. Am I the asshole for being upset that my niece requested payment when I asked her to babysit for a couple hours? My husband, 30s M, and I, 30s F, have a 3 year old son together, Max. Max is a sweet kid but has a difficult time in unfamiliar situations and can get overstimulated easily. A little while ago. My husband was across the country on a work trip, while I was home with Max. I got a call one morning from his manager, informing me that my husband had been in a car accident and was in the hospital. He couldn't tell me much but said that although he was stable, 
it didn't look good and that I should come as soon as I can. I obviously freaked out. I booked a ticket just for myself, because it would be almost impossible to travel with Max, and I could barely afford the last minute ticket for myself. I called my mom who lives a few hours away and asked her to come watch Max while I'm away. At this point, I needed someone to watch Max for the time it would take for my mom to arrive so I could make my flight. Looking back, I probably could have handled the logistics better than this, but I was hysterical and was just doing things as I thought of them. I called three friends, one didn't answer, and two were unable to help. Luckily, we live close to my brother and sister-in-law, who have a daughter, 17F, Sarah. We are very close with them. Sarah answered the door and said her parents were out. I explained the situation and asked if she'd watch Max for a couple hours until my mom came. I should note that Sarah babysits for a few local families and obviously charges them for her services. We have never asked Sarah to babysit before. She showed some concern for my husband and when I asked her again, she said something along the lines of, am I the asshole for being upset that my niece requested payment when I asked her to babysit for a couple hours? We have never asked Sarah to babysit before. She showed some concern for my husband and when I asked her again, she said something along the lines of, well, you'll pay me, right? I usually charge X. I stared at her for a moment, not really expecting that response, and then my friend who didn't answer called me back and said of course she'd watch Max. So, I took Max and left without saying anything to my niece. I coordinated with my friend and my mom, then flew to see my husband. He ended up needing surgery, but is making a full recovery. A few days after he was able to fly home, we had dinner with my brother and sister-in-law. We were talking about the accident, and I mentioned that I had asked Sarah to watch Max. I also noted that I was a little upset that she brought up payment in that moment. My brother was surprised, and said he would talk to her as that's not an appropriate reaction. My sister-in-law interjected and said she was proud of Sarah for advocating for herself. She and I argued and she said that I was entitled for being surprised that Sarah asked for money. To be clear, if I asked Sarah to babysit under normal circumstances, I would absolutely expect to pay her. It was unsettling that Sarah would bring up payment while, for all I knew, my husband was dying in a hospital on the other side of the country. I think it would have been more empathetic to bring up the topic of payment after I returned plus confirmed my husband was okay. My sister-in-law is still being cold with me, and so is my niece. Am I the asshole for getting upset? Am I the asshole for pretending not to know my fiancé after she had a meltdown during boarding the plane and was eventually thrown off? I imagine I'm gonna get raked over the coals for this one. So, my fiancé, maybe not for much longer, and I were on our way back from a vacation recently. It was a great time and everything went off without an issue. That is until we started boarding the plane. Now, I know better, I only bring a small backpack with essentials in case I don't get my checked bags. I can survive out of this backpack and it will always pass baggage check for size and weight, done a lot of traveling so why fight the system? My fiancé didn't want to listen to my advice and chose to bring basically a regular full-size bag that barely fits the standards of carry-on, but generally speaking the airline worker doesn't want to deal with the trouble and allows it through. But this time the airline worker was not having it. It was a packed flight, we were boarding last in economy and it was just a shit show. I got through just fine first with my little backpack but I could hear the argument from the boarding tunnel thingy and it was getting heated. I was about to go back and try to smooth it out but my fiancé rushed past and just boarded plane, I assumed not having heard it super clearly that the attendant had given in and let her on. That was not the case. So we found our seats and settled in. I was pretty tired and I could tell she was upset so I just kinda tucked into the window and put my hat down and tried to take a nap. But soon after the airline Am I the asshole for pretending not to know my fiancé after she had a meltdown during boarding the plane and was eventually thrown off? I was about to go back and try to smooth it out but my fiancé rushed past and just boarded plane, I assumed not having heard it super clearly that the attendant had given in and let her on. That was not the case. So we found our seats and settled in. I was pretty tired and I could tell she was upset so I just kinda tucked into the window and put my hat down and tried to take a nap. But soon after the airline worker and a cop shows up and they are not fucking around and want her off the plane. She tries to plead and cry, etc., but they are not having it. And maybe in a moment of panic or just plain self-preservation, the cop asks if we're together, and I blurt out, no. Shaking my head emphatically. I got killed dagger eyes from her as she shot up and grabbed her bag and followed the cop out. She was also swearing and screaming the whole way out. Now, obviously this is well after the event I'm posting this. But when she did eventually get home, she caught next flight out with the bag checked, lol, I was there to pick her up. She obviously thought I was the asshole, and to be honest almost everyone I know thinks I'm an asshole except my boss and co-workers, who for context were very much relying on me to be back on time, which I gave my word I would, 
for a really important project that was time sensitive. They were all very happy I didn't get thrown off too. So, am I the asshole for this self-preservation? Am I the asshole? I broke up with my girlfriend of seven years because she violated my daughter's privacy. I, 47M, have been with my girlfriend, 40F, for seven years. My daughter, 17F, mother, then 32F, died in a car accident. I own a house that my wife inherited from her parents, my in-laws. My girlfriend has been annoying my daughter by these things. One sit like a proper lady eat slowly like a well-mannered lady. I shut her off. Two my daughter's wrist broke so my girlfriend suggested I can shower Emily. Emily said no obviously ew. Three my daughter's boyfriend, 19M, came over, he's a great kid, and my girlfriend started saying isn't he too handsome for you give me call when you get home she said she was joking. My daughter and her boyfriend were really uncomfortable. 4. She constantly opens the door while my daughter has her friends or boyfriend over. God's sake my daughter's 17. My final straw was when she got a key to my daughter's room and opened it while my daughter and her boyfriend were making love. She got my permission when she was 14 and know these things don't discuss me I've had the safe talk with her. My daughter's boyfriend immediately shouted at my girlfriend I mean who wouldn't the door was fucking locked for a reason. My girlfriend said she was hurt by his comments. My daughters come shouting what's the matter with you I lock the door you give me zero privacy every time someone comes over I've lost so many friends because of you. I have already told you. You will never be my mother and stop trying to replace her. I sat my girlfriend down and told her she can't do this for the 50th time and she said she was making sure. I told her sorry but I can't be with someone who violates my own daughter's privacy I'm breaking up with you. That didn't go well I ended up having to kick her out. Now of course I know I did the right thing but 7 years that's a lot I really do miss her but it's for the best. I would like some mean vicious words telling me I did the right thing so I get back in my peaceful mindset. Am I the asshole for leaving when my mom told me to move my car so her neighbor's daughter can park in her driveway? Some backstory, my mom has always wanted a daughter. Instead she ended up with two sons and six grandsons. 16 years ago, a young woman with a two-year-old daughter, let's call the daughter Lily, moved across the street from her. She was a single mom and didn't have any family in the area so my mom offered to help take care of the little girl while her mom worked slash studied. Over the years, she's become an adoptive mom slash grandmother to this woman and her daughter. She was there when the woman married her husband and had two more girls together. She's very close to the whole family but especially Lily. My mom was born and raised in Italy. My dad was French. My brother and I don't speak any French or Italian. Lily is not only fluent in French and Italian but she knows more about the culture than me or my brother and she knows all of my mom's recipes. My mom also helped pay for her private school tuition because she doesn't like the public schools in the area. Lily, my son, and my nephew graduated from high school in May. My son and my nephew each got a card and a check for $300. My mom took Lily to Europe for 8 weeks over the summer. I got to my mom's house with my sons last night. We planned on staying for a few days because we live 8 hours away. I was parked in the driveway, then right before dinner my mom told me I needed to move my car so Lily could park in her driveway. I said Lily could park on the street but my mom said no, the driveway is Lily's spot and I have to move so I told my sons to get our bags and we went home. My mom has been calling me since last night asking me to come back and saying I overreacted to being asked to move my car. I refused and my sons and I are celebrating without her but I'm starting to wonder if I was the asshole for leaving when my mom told me to move my car. Am I the asshole for sitting on my husband's lap during Thanksgiving dinner because all chairs at the table were taken? I sat on his lap asking if he was okay with it, don't worry I'm petite, he's strong built, and started eating so casually while smiling and complimenting the food and mentioning to Sean how warm and comfortable his lap was now and then. The table went awkwardly silence. Brother-in-law would try to break the silence and change the subject but it somehow goes back to being awkward. Mother-in-law and Jalissa were barely eating and were staring at each other then at me eyes wide open. Minutes later, Jalissa excused herself to the bathroom and so did mother-in-law. It was still awkward but I did my best to focus on dinner. Sean was eating as well. Later, there was just so much tension and mother-in-law was barely able to speak after Jalissa left, early, like right after dinner. Sean and I went home and mother-in-law tried calling but then called Sean and texted me saying what I did was inappropriate and that I ruined Thanksgiving dinner and made it awkward. She said it wasn't her fault chairs were taken and I could have dragged a chair from the kitchen but acted childishly and made Jalissa, and family, uncomfortable with how inappropriate I was. Am I the asshole for refusing to give up my seats and being crass about it? He immediately complained that he hadn't been able to book seats together and he needed to sit with his daughter. I shrugged and said I was sorry, but it wasn't my problem, that wasn't his seat. He called over a stewardess to complain, I explained my situation and showed my pair of tickets, and the flight attendant offered to comp my extra seat. 
I said no, thank you, I needed the extra room and waved to where my bum was partway into the middle seat. The stewardess came back 10 minutes later with a wife from a couple who agreed to switch seats so the man could sit with his daughter. But not without attempting to shame me for not be willing to help out a dad in need and commenting about how selfish I was. I said, I booked early, and I booked two seats together because to put it plainly, I'm fat. His two seats were separate seats. How exactly do you propose I split my fat ass and have to sit one half in one seat and the other half in his other seat? The woman turned red in the face and bitched at me for being disgusting, I replied that his lack of planning was not my emergency, and she scowled at me for the entire rest of the flight. When I told my folks about it after I landed, my dad thought it was the funniest thing he'd ever heard, but my mom yelled at him for encouraging him and said I should have been more willing to help out a dad with a kid when I had two seats. So I want to know, am I the asshole? Am I the asshole for using flashcards to explain to my brother and his wife why they can't bring their rainbow baby to my wedding? My fiancé, F, and I, M, are getting married. We've decided wedding's gonna be child-free. No hate towards children just to keep it more organized and contained. My brother Chris, M, and his wife, F, have a three-year-old son who everyone calls Miracle or Rainbow Baby. He came after several failed pregnancies that lasted for years. When they found out that my nephew was included in the no children rule, they tried to convince me to make an exception for him. Chris told me his son is a miracle baby and his presence at the wedding will bring blessings for me and my fiancé. I refused and said no, the wedding is child-free. His wife kept sending my fiancé pics of my nephew when he was months old, what that mean? I told them no, and to stop. My brother told me this might cause a rift in our relationship, I again said no and explained that the wedding is child-free. He asked again and pointed out how his baby is different since he's a rainbow, a miracle baby. I again said no and explained that the wedding is child-free. They brought it up when they visited at my home and I knew they weren't going to stop so I made flash cards in advance with the phrase the wedding is child-free, period and pulled them out and started slowly showing them the flash cards one by one in this order. The wedding, with a sticker of bride and groom. Is child, with a sticker of a baby. Free, with a sticker of a, no entry sign, sign. Period with a huge, black dot sticker. They both were stunned. I asked if they get it now and Chris had lost his shit. His wife had already grabbed her stuff and walked out. Chris called me an asshole for doing this and said that I disrespected him, his wife and their son who's my one and only nephew. He rushed out after we argued. My fiancé saw the whole thing and thought that it was funny but my parents and Chris are livid beyond measure. They're telling everyone about the amount of disrespect and mockery I had displayed towards them and I'm being told to fix it now. Am I the asshole for begging my girlfriend to uphold a sexist tradition just so she can make a good first impression? I have a big family that's incredibly close. We have big family dinners every few months where we all meet at my great-grandfather's estate and eat together. Typically how this works is that the women go cook for the time they're there and the men don't. Which I am fully aware it's sexist as hell. That being said I'm one of the youngest people in family and my protests mean literally nothing. Some of those women choose not to cook. However this is usually met with a level of ostracizing. The women who don't cook are wives and long-term girlfriends. So they kinda already have a good family relationship doctored in. When I have seen new partners not cook, it's gone bad. Like completely ostracized, not speaking, cattiness, rudeness, etc. This dinner will be in two weeks and my girlfriend was asked if she would attend. Initially she said yes, which is great. I want for her to meet everyone and for everyone to get used to her being around. But when I explained to her the tradition she was understandably bothered. I told her that I understood where she was coming from, however it was best for everyone if she just played along. I told her this isn't a permanent thing and that I am only asking her to do this so that she can avoid bad treatment from the rest of the family. This is her first impression and I don't think it's best if we cause waves. She told me that it's unacceptable and that if she has to do that she will not be going. I've tried to find a compromise with her on this but she won't budge and she's pissed at me. She told me that if I think it's acceptable to make her do this I'm just as bad as everyone else, while my point is that she needs to make a good first impression. Am I the asshole? Am I the a-hole for taking my beer after I was uninvited from a party? So, on Thursday, out of the blue, a person I had a massive crush on during high school messaged me. It was pretty unusual because she never messaged me first. Oh, and at some point, I realized she had blocked me on social media before. So, her sudden friendliness was kind of strange. After a few friendly hellos and questions about how I've been, she mentioned she was planning to hang out with some pals and wanted me to get the drinks. Now, where we live, the legal age for drinking is 19, and she and her buddies were all 18. The stores that sell booze always check IDs. I thought it was pretty silly that being just a month older meant I could buy alcohol, and they couldn't. Anyhow, 
I agreed and said I'd go. She was like, cool, I'll pick you up at 7. Fast forward to 7 o'clock, and she texts me saying she's outside my house. I got ready to chill with the gang and hopped into her car. She drove me to the liquor store. When we got there, I asked her what kind of beer she wanted, and she said Budweiser. I tried not to look disappointed, but I went ahead and bought two cases of 24. Back in the car, I was like, let's get this party started. But she was super quiet. I noticed we weren't headed to her neighborhood, but back towards mine. I wondered if she'd moved or something, but I didn't want to bug her. When she turned onto my street, it hit me. She was vague about inviting me because she wanted me to get the drinks, but she also wanted a way to say I wasn't really invited after all. She stopped in front of my house, leaned over for a cheek kiss, and said, thanks a bunch. I couldn't hide my flat expression and asked her when she was going to admit I wasn't invited. She acted surprised and said she never meant to invite me in the first place. I sat there in silence for a super awkward minute, then grabbed the beer, walked to my front door, and let myself in. She got out of the car all frantic, trying to invite me again, but I told her that what she did was the most embarrassing thing ever. I closed the door pretty hard, came back to my room, and here I am. So now I'm sipping on some subpar beer, and I've got texts from all her buddies and are asking why I'm acting like a jerk. I don't think I'm the bad guy for reacting the way I did, but honestly, I'm not a social wizard, so I'm not completely sure. Am I in the wrong here? Am I the a-hole for telling my obese best friend that I physically cannot eat as much as her? My best friend and I have been extremely close since childhood. We've been through our whole lives together, and she is the closest, most important friend in my life. We get along wonderfully, that is, except one weird thing. For context, I am taller, and have always been naturally slim, while she is short, was naturally thick and gradually became obese during our 20s. Coming back to the weird thing, she has a habit of forcing food on me when she is hungry or wants a snack. For example, when we hang out, she will keep filling my plate even though I tell her that I am full. She will keep opening snacks and then telling me to take some repeatedly. She will fill me a glass of soda when I clearly say I don't want it. But, she wants more food, snacks or drinks, so she will take some for her and force some on me as well. In the past 25 years of friendship I have said nothing of this, and I generally manage to go around it. I don't know why she does this, but I have always thought she feels better if she is not eating alone. Strange habit. Fast forward this weekend, we hung out at her house for a few hours, just the two of us. The whole time she was commenting how I am drinking slowly, one glass of wine in the time period she drank three, and not eating anything, there was only potato chips and similar snacks. In the end, she took out large ice creams, and while I said I didn't want ice cream, she opened both and passed one to me. I then said girl you don't seem to understand that I physically cannot eat as much as you, thank you but I am really full for my lunch, the glass of wine is enough for me. She got mad, she said I insulted her, and that she is offering out of politeness. She is still passive aggressive towards me. Both her husband and mine think I was harsh on her, and throwing my thin body in her face. That was not my intention at all, and I would never intentionally hurt her. I apologized for hurting her feelings. How could I have possibly communicated this better? Am I the a-hole for revealing the truth to my teen daughter as to why I was divorcing her father? Dot when my daughter first found out about the divorce, she started doing parent trap style things, like planning more family hangouts and asking we all go out to dinner together more often. I think she was feeling the distance between me and her dad, and she was desperate to repair our relationship and just wanted to see things go back to normal. My daughter had always been too young to understand the cracks in me and her father's marriage, and I never had trauma dumped on her. When I was young, my mother would constantly complain to me about my own father, and I always remember how confused and sad it would make me. I loved my dad, and I didn't understand why my mom just couldn't love him too. So I made a point as a mother to never unload or overshare to my daughter, we still had a close relationship but I never spoke badly about her father to her. Anyways. Fast forward to this week, my husband and I's divorce was in process, and the house has remained tense. I decided it was time to sit my daughter down and tell her the truth, that me and her dad were going to be together anymore. She did not take it well at all, and it was a tough conversation to have all on my own with my daughter. My husband didn't want to be there for it since he said he didn't want to stress her out. I will never be able to get the image of my weeping, confused daughter out of my head. She is 14 but it was like she suddenly regressed back to a toddler, she just kept asking why I didn't love daddy anymore. And begging us to please fix it. She said she didn't want to lose her family, and I tried to reassure her that we both loved her and we would both always be here for her. I had no idea what to say when she responded to this with, but daddy's not even here for me right now. It was one of the most painful, difficult moments of my entire life. I just held her as she cried in my arms for 
hours, then we watch one of her favorite movies, and I put her to bed like I did when she was little. The following week was hard, and she would break down crying often. I met with the school counselor to arrange in school therapy with her, and I checked in with her every day to assure her that she was loved and to see how she was feeling. She tried to confront my husband a couple of times about why we were breaking up, but all he would say was, ask your mother. Finally, towards the end of the week, my husband gave her this line again after she had questioned him about the divorce. I heard her screaming, asking him why he kept saying that. I walked into the room they were arguing in, and my daughter just shot me an angered look and asked me what her dad meant. She was angry and crying, she walked up to me and asked, what did you do? This is where I may have effed up, I had been trying so long to protect my family and spare my daughter's feelings, but I just couldn't bear the thought of her thinking I hadn't tried to save my family in every way possible before I asked for a divorce. I looked at her and said that her father had cheated on me. I didn't give any details, I didn't say the girl's age, but it was enough to send my daughter into another breakdown. She collapsed in my arms, crying for a moment before standing back up and chewing her dad out. My daughter started yelling at her father, reprimanding him for doing that to me, and just begging him for a reason why he would do this to our family. She just kept saying, you hurt me too dad, you hurt me too it was such a heartbreaking scene, that night, I put my daughter to bed like she was a toddler again, she was just so broken down, and I was doing anything to make her feel better. Since that day, she hasn't spoken to my husband, and she sees her school therapist every day. She still checks in with me and speaks to me like normal, but I am watching such a depressing change in my sweet baby girl. I see her spirit has been affected, and some of her childhood joy and innocence have been watered down since she started going through all this. My heart is breaking, and I wonder if I really screwed up and caused her extra pain by revealing the truth about her father's infidelity. Am I the a-hole for using a fake test to expose my colorblind brother in front of friends and family? So, I, F-17 have a brother, M15, who claims he's colorblind. When he was younger, all his paintings and drawings seemed normal. The whole colorblind claim started after he turned 10, all because of a light pink t-shirt he perceived as white. My parents joked about him being colorblind since my uncle is. To this day, he continues this claim, constantly mentioning it to others, which has always annoyed me because I'm sure he's lying. I've told my parents, but they brush me off, saying I'm just jealous of the attention he gets. So, last week was my birthday. I had a gathering at home with about 25 to 30 people on the weekend. The topic of his supposed colorblindness came up again, with everyone asking him to identify colors. I, feeling frustrated, asked him to take an Ishihara test on the TV. He agreed after some hesitation. I went up to my room to grab my computer to plug into the TV. But instead of a genuine test, I used a fake Ishihara test, one that anyone could pass. He pretended not to see some numbers. And once the test concluded, I revealed to everyone that it was a fake test, aiming to show he was lying. The mood turned sour. My brother and parents were furious. His friends started making fun of him, and then, out of nowhere, he lunged at me, and tried to beat the poop out of me. To say chaos broke loose would be an understatement. My family tried to brush this whole thing off, making jokes, and my friends found it amusing. Post-party, my parents were livid, they labeled me as an attention seeker and a jealous asshole and grounded me for embarrassing my brother. They didn't seem to care that he physically assaulted me. Mind you, he's a ginormous dude, so he could have done serious damage. I feel like had he been honest, he wouldn't have been humiliated. So, am I the a-hole? Am I the a-hole for disowning my eldest daughter for going after her younger sister's boyfriend? I have two daughters. Madison is 28 while Naomi is 23. Madison has always been a problematic child ever since she was little for things outside of her control. As a young girl she's always been what people call a pick-me girl. She was in constant need to be the center of attention while also trying to one-up people in any way she possibly could. This started happening around the time she turned eight. She was placed in extensive therapy for years and ultimately it was chalked up to abandonment issues and seeking male validation due to her father essentially wanting nothing to do with her after years of being a daddy's girl. She did calm down in her teen years though and we thought maybe the personal and family therapy was finally beginning to help her out. She started dating a nice guy named Tommy around 5 years ago but they split up back in December because he wasn't ready for marriage when she was. It destroyed her mentally though and she started to spiral back to her old ways. Her younger sister Naomi started dating a guy named Heath and they've been together for a little over a year. The two of them have apparently already started talking about marriage and children around the same time Madison and Tommy split up. I didn't notice it at the time but about a month ago it became really obvious that Madison had her eyes on Naomi's boyfriend. 
whenever we would invite her for family dinners, she would ask if Heath was going to be there and show up dressed to the nines in flashy revealing clothes while flirting with him excessively whenever Naomi wasn't around. At this point I decided to confront her and told her she needed to tone it down. I suggested that she go back to therapy but she informed me that she didn't mean to flirt with Heath and that she was just trying to find herself again after a bad breakup. She insisted that she had no interest in Heath so I decided to take her word for it. That was until Naomi called me sobbing three nights ago, asking if she could come back home. We opened our doors to her and she began telling us how Madison and Heath started having an affair and that Madison had been messaging Heath consistently for two months. I tried my best to calm Naomi down and when she was finally able to fall asleep, I called Madison and asked her if it was true. She confirmed that it was and told me that she didn't mean for it to happen. She went on to say that her and Heath just clicked in a way he didn't with Naomi and that she's so unbelievably happy with him. She ended her confession by telling me that although she's happy it sucked that she had to hurt her sister in the process but she believes she deserves to be empathized with in this situation as well because it was apparently really hard to keep her feelings to herself. I was shocked. I told her she was no longer part of this family and that she made her bed so now she'd have to lay in it. Other family members are telling me I was a bit too harsh, knowing Madison's history with mental health issues but I honestly can't even look at her the same way after that phone call. I'm disgusted by my daughter for thinking she deserves even an ounce of sympathy for what she's done to her sister. Am I the a-hole? Am I the a-hole for telling my mom she has no self-respect? My high school has an annual fall dance and a lot of the dance will be taking place outside. Anyway, the boys are supposed to ask the girls, and yesterday at lunch, a boy asked me, a girl, and I agreed to go with him. My dad has always been a traditional kind of guy when it comes to me and my younger sister. So last night at dinner, I mentioned that I had a date for the dance, and he made a crack about answering the door with his shotgun. The thing is, I'm pretty sure he would do it. I told him that if he was going to be like that, I'd just meet up with our friend group at school. He then got very serious and told me in an angry tone that he didn't want me sneaking around with some guy without his knowledge. He asked me what I even knew about this guy. He then said he didn't want me to turn into one of those ran through guys who give it all away to the first guy they meet and who no self-respecting man would ever want to marry. That's when I flipped a switch. I like to think I'm a pretty good kid. I get good grades. I play volleyball. I help my sister with her homework and help drive her to her soccer practice. I've never had a boyfriend. So being talked to like I was some love-struck idiot who was going to wind up pregnant because I'm choosing to go to a dance with a friend really annoyed me. Also, I know a bit about my dad's history. He was in a frat in college, and he's told stories to my cousin, who recently started college at a big state school where frat culture is a big thing. So I told him that this guy is my friend and he seems nice, but if he turns out to be a jerk I'll figure it out, and also, I only agreed to go to a dance. The last time I checked, Going to a dance was not a binding intimate contract, and here's where I may have crossed the line. I told him that I knew he was in a frat in college, and I know what goes on in those places. I also know the stories he's told my cousin. So in the heat of the moment, I said something along the lines of, by your own logic, the only person who's ran through in the family is you. Then I looked at my mom and said you must have had no self-respect to have married that batman of a dad. By the looks on their faces, I could tell what I said was hurtful. And then of course, I got yelled at and probably won't be able to go to the dance at all. But I feel like it's unfair for him to give me a lecture about ran through behavior and self-worth when he's recently been bragging to my male cousin about doing much worse things when he was just a few years older than me. But maybe I crossed the line trying to prove my point. Am I the a-hole for refusing to take my girlfriend to nice places because she eats like a kid? My girlfriend is an incredibly picky eater. Like I said in my title, she eats like she is 10 years old. In fact I'll give a short list of things she refuses to eat. Unflavored water, fish, excluding fried shrimp, anything with bones, cheese other than sharp cheddar, spinach, onions, garlic, pasta without red sauce, eggs, spicy food, aioli, ketchup, potatoes, other than french fries, pastries with fruit, citrus, sausage or any non-American food. This compares to me, someone who grew up in multiple different regions of the US and lived in abroad for a few years, so I'm a bit more adventurous when it comes to food. Whenever me and my girlfriend go out somewhere nice she ends up getting the same meals usually either a burger or chicken tenders and fries. We could be going to an authentic Nepalese restaurant and she will get the French fries and white rice. To me it's kind of embarrassing to go to a restaurant where there is a dress code and for her to order chicken tenders and fries. It especially bothers me that since I typically pay, I end up paying 15 bucks for chicken tenders that I could get from the freezer section at Walmart for 5 bucks. Recently in our area a very nice dinner place opened up and my girlfriend has been dying to go. I took a look at the place and the menu and saw that it looked nice but the food was kind of pricey. She said she was probably gonna get chicken tenders as per usual. I asked her what's the point of going then if I can toss some tenders in the air fryer for her and not spend a ridiculous amount of money on it. She asked why I had an attitude about this and I told her that I thought it was a waste of time and money to go to a nice place to get little kid food. She interpreted this as me calling her a little kid. I clarified that I wasn't calling her a child, 
however it is kinda childish for her to eat the way she does. I also said that if she's gonna order food we can make it home there's not any point in us going anywhere. This led to an argument about me thinking I'm better than her. Am I the a-hole for telling my friend she shouldn't be proud of being a fat slob? My friend Tara has always been a little overweight, and in the past, she couldn't accept it. She tried so many diets, but nothing lasted more than a few weeks as, quote, my love for food is so strong. A few years ago, she met a guy, and that was the hint she needed to get serious help from a professional doctor and to start exercising. I need to say she looked stunning after a few months and was able to catch the guy. Let's say that the virus got the best of them, and after three long years of relationship, he dumped her. She was devastated at the beginning. She regained almost all the weight she had lost previously, but after some time, I and other friends managed to make her standing again. She came back to hanging out with us, and she flirted with some guys, nothing serious. In the meantime, another girl joined our group, let's call her Maya. Maya is the kind of girl that's naturally fit and doesn't need exercising at all, and that's something Tara couldn't accept. She began teasing her all the time, saying things like, hey, don't hug her too tight, you might break her. How can you manage to have intimacy? A boy could crush you, I'm glad I gained my weight back because I used to look like you or even at least I have some meat they can grab, if a boy grabbed you where would he put his hands? On your collarbones? Maya always tried to laugh it off as she was the new girl, but I could see her not being comfortable at all. Last night, after the umpteenth comment, I blurted a at least she can fit in a pair of jeans. Tara suddenly fell silent as the rest of the group turned their heads on me, and I continued. You shouldn't body shame someone over jealousy, and you shouldn't be proud of being overweight either. You know that doesn't help your medical conditions. Tara stormed away, and a few girls followed her to check on her. Everyone called me an a-hole, saying that I shouldn't make fun of her for being overweight, nor should I bring up her medical conditions in front of someone that doesn't know her that much. I told them that it's hypocritical that they would scold me about saying that, something that's at least true, and wouldn't say a thing to Tara as she was body shaming Maya. So, am I the a-hole question mark speaking about Maya? She thanked me a lot after the infamous dinner as the whole time she didn't know how to answer to her comment because she felt like everyone would have judged her. She also felt like everyone was enabling Tara to say and do anything she wanted just because she would play the victim card whenever she needed to and was then sure she would have been excluded by the group as she stood her ground. Also, it seems like Maya had spoken to some other girls from the group about this situation but they all answered things like it's Tara, she's like that, don't worry, at some point she'll get tired of it and my favorite well, you know, if we told her to stop it might hurt her feelings, she's so fragile. Then tonight I went to dinner at one of my friend's houses. There were Tara and Maya too, I knew that, and that's partially why I wrote the post. As I arrived, I took Tara and went in a separate room with her, I told her I was sorry for what I said, but that I talked out of frustration. I also told her that I think her bullying Maya all the time is not cool at all and that she should apologize. She nodded and said she totally understood my point of view but wasn't going to apologize because this wasn't the occasion. Everything seemed fine between us, even though I wasn't totally happy with her answer, and we went back to the others. Literally, 20 minutes ago, we had dessert. Do you see where I'm going? As I was eating the first bite of the cake, Tara announced, as this a-hole thinks that I'm fat, I decided to go on a diet, so I'm not having it. I almost choked out everyone laughed out of embarrassment, not knowing exactly what to do. Or say. Then Maya turned to her and said, well, that's the smartest thing I've ever heard you say. I'm writing this from the passenger seat of Maya's car. We both left the house because there's been a huge fuss after Maya's comment and I finally realized that you don't have to hang out with people that you don't like anymore just because you were friends in high school. Am I the a-hole for getting mad at my girlfriend for pulling a naked prank on me? I had a girlfriend of 8 months who I recently went on what was supposed to be a week-long beach trip in Queensland with her friends and family. She had been planning this trip for a long time and was looking forward to it, especially since I'd have the chance to get to know them all. On the third day we planned to go river rafting. When we got there I was looking through my bag before I went to change and couldn't find my trunks. I instead found a new navy blue pair. When I told her this, she replied with oh yeah, that's the extra one I packed in case you lost yours. I thought this was thoughtful, I changed into them and we all headed down towards the river. We all got into our tubes and started floating off. About 3 minutes and I feel my suit getting baggier, and I even notice a piece is falling off. I was disappointed that they were a cheap pair but I kept going. Once we hit the rapids it got real though. I felt a sudden rush of cold water and I noticed my trunks had been torn clear off by the water. I stood up covering myself with just the last piece. Everyone else, about 15 of her friends and family, started to laugh. I was absolutely horrified, one of my biggest fears is being naked in public, and now I was completely nude with no way to get back. I can't tell you how trapped and humiliated I felt. I had to spend the rest of the day with the water up to my shoulders, feeling awkward and embarrassed the whole time. Whenever we were in shallow water I was forced to stand up and walk exposed in front of them. They weren't prudish either, her friends and parents made jokes and comments on my body as we went. Her young cousins made sure to comment on the shape and size of my junk when I couldn't cover myself also. When we got back to the beach I had to run covering myself back to my towel. My day was completely ruined. I felt humiliated and angry. When we got back to our room, I was back into clothes trying to forget the day when my girlfriend came in giggling to herself. She asked me if I liked the new swim trunks, and when I asked what she meant she told me she had ordered a prank dissolving pair online and replaced my other one with it. I was absolutely livid. She had purposefully exposed and violated me because she thought it'd be a good laugh. She even made sure not to pack another pair or a towel. I started yelling and she told me to calm down, saying that it was only a joke. I left that night, and I didn't call her the next day. She called screaming at me, acting like I was the one who had wronged her, saying that she had worked hard for this trip and that I was being immature. But I didn't want to be around someone who would humiliate me, 
especially considering that her own family and friends would be present. I can understand that I ruined the trip for her, but it feels like her own fault. Am I the a-hole if I uninvite my sister-in-law who's in love with my husband? My husband and I met each other at a ski lodge nine years ago. I was with my young daughter and a female friend and her child. My husband was with his two brothers and three sisters and a few friends. There was a singing competition and both of us were set up by our friends to enter it. Sparks flew during our duet and the rest is history. This was the first time I caught on to my sister-in-law's disturbing behavior. After the singing competition, he and I went to the cafe to chat. His middle sister, Tina, who was adopted at birth, came storming up to us and demanded he come back to their group. She never looked at me and whined when he shut her down. She ran off crying and apparently took her sister's room keycards and locked them out so they had to stay with the friends in their room. Fast forward to when we bought a house together. We had a housewarming and invited family and close friends. Tina showed up in a SI club outfit. She ignored me the entire time and hung all over my husband, boyfriend at the time. She kept recalling tales of them when they were little and how close they were. She'd kiss him on the cheek, hug him, and touched his arm when laughing. He was visibly uncomfortable so I stepped in. At first, I just thought she had a crush on him, but the way she was acting looked like she was the girlfriend and not me. She was going around reminding slash telling everyone that he used to say he never wanted to have kids, but now he's playing daddy to my daughter. One of my friends said she thought Tina was weird for talking about how hot his modeling photos were when he did print work back in college and that her favorite photo was of them at a beach in Hawaii during a family vacation a few years back. The most bizarre thing she told a few people was that he had never dated a woman of color before and now all of a sudden he's in love. It's only bizarre to me because she's biracial, so I don't know why this would bother her, unless. She's jealous of me because she wished she were me. Then things go south at the end of the night when he gets down on one knee and proposes to me. She started crying and ran to the restroom. Their dad went to check on her and then drove her home. I knew exactly why she was upset, but my husband always equated her behavior to jealousy because she never had healthy relationships. After that tantrum, she skipped our wedding, baby shower, our children's birthday parties, and other family events that we attended. I was fine with extending invitations because I knew she wasn't going to show up. She had some sort of mental breakdown and was in and out treatment for years. I wish nothing but the best for her and I don't know what kind of issues she's going through, but I don't want her disrupting our peace. I'm currently pregnant and our baby shower is at the end of this month. I'm having it a few months early because I'm at risk for going into labor early, like I did with my other two children. My mother-in-law called to RSVP and stated Tina would be riding with them and if it was okay if she brought her new boyfriend. I was surprised because we hadn't seen her in years, but I was apprehensive to agree. Eventually, I did agree and hope that she resolved whatever caused her so much distress when she was around my family. Well it took all of 24 hours for her to start her nonsense. She texted my husband paragraphs at 3 a.m. telling him how she felt about our family. First, she went on to say how much she missed them being close and how I came in and destroyed their close relationship, when I barely said 50 words to her in 9 years. She asked him if he was happy with his life because again, he used to say he never wanted kids or to get married. She then asked if he thought about her all this time and if he could meet up with him before the shower and talk alone, face to face. That was the last straw for me. I asked my husband if he knew she was in love with him and he just shrugged and said he didn't doubt my theory. Apparently, when she was 11, she asked if they could cuddle and kiss and he said no. He admits her behavior since then has always been weird and dramatic, but he didn't pay her much attention because there were many siblings and they all hung out all the time. I asked him if he could uninvite her and this new boyfriend because I think she's going to bring drama to our baby shower. He said he wants to talk to his parents first to see what kind of state she's been in, but I know in my gut that she's ready to ruin our day with her theatrics. So am I the a-hole for wanting to uninvite her to the baby shower?